Hi, I'm Sarah from Stamp Addicts. We manufacture rubber stamps. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a shaker card with shrink plastic and our funky fish. So I've got some white shrink plastic that I've placed in my stamping platform. So I'm gonna use my magnets to hold in position and my rubber stamps. Now you can see that we trim our rubber stamps so it's nice and close to the design that way we can see where we're positioning them if we need to. So let's go close to, because stamping on plastic can be tricky, so we need to keep it nice and firm and steady. Now, I'm gonna use stays on pigment, and this is pink cosmos, because I like my fish to be tropical and bright and I've got a nice orange peel. That's it, I'll give them a good anking, inking, anking, inking. Oh dear. Okay, so we're gonna push down firmly. Now the benefit of using the platform, if there's not enough ink, we can re-ink and go again. But no, plenty of ink, well that's good. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it to dry for just a couple of minutes and then we can trim them out. So then I'm gonna start on the card. So if I just move that to the side and I take my crease card. Now I've die cut a circle here because I want to ink inside. This is gonna be inside. So kind of like a pretend aperture and the shaker's gonna go on the front. So this is just a bit of masking tape to hold that down. And a nice pale tumbled glass distress oxide. So I always put the ink onto the working surface, like my heat sheet. If you take your sponge direct to the ink pad, you end up damaging the ink pad or kind of making it a bit rough so it's not easy to stamp with it afterwards. So, you can see I'm just working round and round. So we've got a nice blue background for our little fishies. Oh, looks like I'm gonna get this done in one, all the way around. Okay, so before I remove my mask, I want to stamp some seaweed. Now, there's a little bit of my card exposed at the bottom, so I'm just gonna pop some scrap paper there, and I'm gonna grab my stamping press, pop my seaweed on, and grab one of my green Distress Oxides. So this is mowed lawn, so it's quite a bright green, and we're gonna stamp over the die cut. Remember you can ink once, stamp twice. So we've got nice overlapped seaweed. And you can do it in several different greens as well. Let's have a little bit on this side. And a little bit more. Now in the set, you do get two seaweed so we can switch out to the other one and maybe a darker green so we can give it some depth i mean obviously you could go crazy in the background putting all different seaweeds or maybe you could do them in different greens and blues okay maybe just one more over there. Okay, I think that works. So if we remove our mask, you can see the beginnings of what is gonna be our shaker card. Now, using the same die, but in slightly different sizes, one bigger, one smaller, I've die cut this silver frame, and I put some acetate on the frame. Now on the acetate, I've stamped the same seaweed, but with the green stays on. So that's ready to go on the top 
once we've done our shrinking. Now, we need some fish to shrink, don't we? So here we go. Now, I would always recommend using an anti-static bag, if you have one, when you're shrinking. Just a little tap on each thing. Not so difficult with these little guys, but if you're doing something that's bigger or has thin areas, they can curl up. So that always helps to stop them sticking. Now I'm using the, the Ranger heat tool that looks like a hairdryer, but it's not as fierce and powerful as some of the heat guns. So if you have one with multiple settings, put it on the lowest setting, or you can put the shrink plastic in your oven and then you can sit and watch it through the doors. Now you can see it's got a little dimple in the middle. So I'm just gonna flip it over and then you can see that dimple just disappears. Now, because it's a shaker card, I want my fish flat. So I'm just gently touch it with an acrylic block or an ink pad, anything flat. You don't want to squish it, you just want to touch it. So let's do that again. See, that one's got a little tiny dimple. Just flip it over, flip it back. That one's nice and flat, and then we've got the final one. Now I decided in this card, I was gonna do, what did I do? Nine fish in three different colors. So this is just the pink. So that one, that one is flat. Now you'll notice they look a little bit powdery. So we're just gonna take a little bit of paper towel and wipe off the powder. Careful, they're still warm. Okay. Oh, while well, they're cooling down, let's go back to the card. Now it's a little bit naked on the front. So what we have is this stencil, our under the sea stencil, and we can add some bubbles in the background. And let's go back to our pale blue ink pad and a little bit more of that on the sheet. And just some, let's start with the medium ones, working our way down the page. Obviously you might want to cover some of the others if you're worried about inking bubbles you don't want. So I'm going to go for those little ones there. And now we can do some more over here. I think I should make one of these in green. Some nice sea green colors. Okay, so, and then we need some more over here. And then you might want to finish off with a a sentiment or a name, something along the bottom. Oh, let's have a few more over here. Okay, so I've left room down here so we can add a sentiment if we want to. Okay. Now, to create the shaker section, you do need foam tape. And it's in a circle, so that does make it slightly trickier. But what I've discovered is if I just snip every, I don't know, every centimeter maybe. Now let's see, do I want it just inside the blue? So we're just gonna do little snips as we go around so that we can create, but you don't wanna snip all the way through because obviously we need to create a barrier that stops everything from escaping. Okay, so we're going to work our way around. I guess this is probably the fiddliest bit. And I think this is a three millimetre tape, three millimetre thick. Two millimetre would probably be better, but that does depend on your shrink plastic. 
So around we go. And along with the shrink that's going to go inside, I've got some other, you could put sequins in it. Um, I tend to stick away from glitter because it's very static. So you can use beads, rocks, little broken bits of off cuts of uh, glass beads and things. Okay, so we're nearly, so you want to make sure there's no gap. So I usually go a little bit longer than necessary and then squeeze them in. Okay, so we're going to make sure that's nice and stuck down. Okay, so we have some little fish that are going to go inside. Let's add the other colours. There we go, it's a little selection of fish. And then I've got, these are called rocks. They're a bit like glass beads, but random texture, random shapes. So that is ready. Now we need to find the end. <laughs> oh, now one thing I was gonna say, if you find that around the inside of your tape is sticky, I just use a little paintbrush, of which I haven't got on me, but, and a little bit of anti-static and just wipe it around the inside. So that way it stops your beads and your shrink plastic sticking to the sticky tape. Just a little tip. Right, now, I don't know where the end is, so I'm gonna start in the middle. There we go. And I've got my acetate window. That's gonna go on the front, nice and central. Make sure it's stuck down firmly so nothing can escape. And then we have our finished shaker card.